had resolved it by the time I came around. But um, and all the ball players were. I mean, you've never you've never lived until you've seen somebody who's like seven feet tall and you're a little girl. Uh-huh. It's, <laughs> it's just like seeing a real giant. But like I said, watching the old movies with my mom, you know, I love Betty Davis and I love Marilyn Monroe, but I love Betty Davis. She, to me, had the most interesting stories. And also Susan Sarandon. Yes, um, Susan Sarandon. She had, she had some of the most interesting things to play. And I realized that, you know, they weren't like A-list movies, but who cared? Because her characters, she really got to delve into them and all that, but you know, in a way that um, a lot of bigger movies, you don't, you know, they're, they're more mainstream, but the independent movie you get to be a little more funky mm-hmm. and and it's it's fun it's fun so those were those were my and i actually tried to do my hair like susan sarandon too which luck, lucky for me was in the 80s when big hair was in because otherwise that would have been really stupid mm-hmm. <laughs> um and i'm trying to think who else those were the main people and then i got into i got into classical actresses which nobody knows who they are and you don't care but um mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I thought I was going to be Betty Davis when I grew up. In fact, I didn't want to be on TV. I said, because those in those days, if you're on TV, then you couldn't be in the movies. There was a real, you know, there's TV people, but then there's the, um, you know, film people. And it was now it's not like that. Mm-hmm. But before, I mean, so I thought I got to get myself off this TV show as fast as I can so that I can be a movie star. <laughs> I want to be in the movies. Mm-hmm. And, um, Today, I mean, there's still some of that, but it's it's the it's not like it was before. Like when I first got to town here, was, they said, "Do you have film on yourself?" And I said, "I've got two or three years of soap opera being on a soap opera every day." And they went, "No, that doesn't count. Do you have film on yourself?" Uh huh. And it, and I thought, what's the freaking difference? <laughs> oh, oh 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 exactly too. And of course, you know, now you got the web series, got Netflix yeah. and uh, YouTube and everything else, and um, maybe with some of the movies we haven't hit upon. So, uh, what are some of the uh, fil- films you've been on in terms of just Netflix only, web series, and uh, YouTube only or internet only? What are some oh of the projects you've been in? Um, I was on. Um, oh gosh, was it Tim and Eric show with um, Patrick Duffy? Mm-hmm. And that was that was uh, really strange, really, really, really strange. That's that's another thing that's just kind of wrong. Um, I've done numerous things. I played a psychic on a web series thing. Um, um, oh shoot! It's when you you know when you get to be old like I am, you can't remember the things you've done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, take it take it from someone who uh, started in radio in 1982, same time as the Fast Times at Ridgemont High. We, I mean, many people think it's still uh, popular, but then you look at the other generations like, what the crap was that? <laughs> so, Well, you know, Al, I saw Al Pacino and um, Robert De Niro do a, a Q&A together about heat. And finally, um, um, Al Pacino goes, you know what? I don't remember that. <laughs> he just admitted it. He just completely copped to it. And then De Niro goes, I don't really remember that either. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or did he want to blank it out or something like, you know, just uh, psychologically yeah, just bl- blank it out or something. So <laughs> Maybe, but, you know, when you've done as many movies as those guys, you'd be honest. You, I tell you what, though, when I do these conventions, um, the fans are so awesome. They have me in tears like at least once every show because it's it's just that, the, you know, I mean – you, you you exist to feel like you touched somebody's life, you know, that, that you communicated, that you made a connection. And so when somebody tells you something personal about what that movie meant to them or something, mm-hmm. it, makes, it makes your whole life worthwhile. It's like, God, you know, I forgot that people are actually out there watching this stuff. And, I, and it's easy to forget when you're just working with a camera. You know, you know why you're doing it. And, but But it's nice to hear that feedback because it's not like having a live audience, you know. And so... Um, but but one thing that, that they will do is they know my lines better than I know. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that something? I think they are big fans of you then. And, of course, yeah. you, you, you touch about the, uh, the the thing on conventions. And um, what do they have you uh, on conventions for? Just being an actress, being in Fast Times, and being in a certain role? Or um, when you go to conventions, a, how they um, market you as? I'm a horror icon. Okay. Um, yeah. I, just, I, just, I just did this thing. I'm in this documentary that's coming out called um, – um, in Search of Darkness, horror films of the 80s. And those those were like where I did my major horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so so they interviewed all sorts of people. Um, and um, um, I think, gosh, everybody, everybody's in this thing. Um, 
and uh, it was really an honor to be in it. But and I loved it. I loved it because it's the, like the last thing I think of is, uh, you know, that's not that's not what you want to be when you grow up. You don't think of it that way. But actually, it's a really tight knit community and it's fabulous. And that- you know, although I love doing comedy and I love doing television and stuff. I really love the fact that these fans are so into it and they, they you know, it's just, it's just like a family and they're so sweet too. They come up to you and they look like, you know, like they're dressed as Satan. And then you say, well, what do you do? And they say, I work in a, in a, a nursing home or <laughs> they're the sweetest people, but they just like that horror stuff. I guess it's just a release for them or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's also part of it too. And you talked about conventions and um, where will we be peering next uh, in terms of conventions. We know it's recorded, but at least give some fans on ideas on uh, where will you be peering down the road and where? Well, I, I don't really know right now. I mean, I don't usually know this far ahead, but everything can be, you can, I always post everything on all my social media and on my website. So it could, it's, it's generally pretty well known when I'm going to be someplace by okay. the time I get there. Yeah. Okay, we'll get to that part in just a minute. And uh, we've got a few minutes here with um, Kelly Maroney of the Twin Cities. Uh, appeared in uh, Fast Times with Ridgemont High, Night of the Comet, TV's Ryan Hope, and One Life to Live. And uh, of all the movies you've done, of course, you know, many others we've mentioned. And there are some that I haven't mentioned. I apologize. What do you consider your favorite projects and the most challenging that you've done? Oh, well, challenge. I mean, everyone, everything is a challenge in its own way because I always feel like I'm starting for, from scratch. You know, I never just like go, okay, it's like making a cake, A, B, C, D. I always approach it and, and I always end up learning so much. Every time, every time I do a play, I think I should be on stage every single day because that's how I'm learning stuff. It's one of those things where, and I suppose you don't have to feel this way about it, but if you love what you're doing, you feel like, boy, I can't learn enough, you know, I'm going to be learning about this till the, till my, you know, till my life is over because it's just, there's so much to know. Um, so I approach every role like that. Um, and wherever the, the character happens to lead me is where I go. So everything has kind of had, um, the most challenging I think was the zero boys. You mentioned that a couple of times because it was in the dark. We shot the whole thing in the dark, um, with Martin Sheen's, um, brother, um, Joe Estevez, who looked exactly like him. In fact, I walked into the make- makeup trailer and I come running out and I go, you guys, Martin Sheen is in this. <laughs> 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 they look exactly alike, but but it wasn't him. But anyway, we're shooting in the dark and there's rain machines and there's this crazy Greek director yelling at us and screaming at us. And we all, they, they, had, they brought one trailer out for us, boys and girls. Oh no! Went, oh, oh no 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 no! Right? So so um, you know, first it was like, okay, all the women are going in to change, and we'll let you know when we're done. And then you know, I'd be like knocking on the door. Are there any men in here? Because we need to come in. I mean, it was ridiculous, and this went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, so that was challenging just because it, the terrain was rough, and here you are running around in the dark. And you're, I mean, you are falling down, you know, <laughs> and it is, there's a, even if it's not raining, there's a rain machine. So it is raining on you, whether it's raining or not. So that was, I mean, that was kind of like apocalypse now in a weird way. Mm-hmm. And that movie is kind of the precursor to the Saw movies. Um, so um, um, it was, and it's based on a true story, actually, a really creepy true story about uh, some guys up north here in California that um, they would waylay people and kill them. And torture them and stuff like that and and that was true they did do that and so this is a movie that was loosely used that as a as a as a jumping point off into the story we didn't claim that we were recreating that story because that would have been in very poor taste but oh my goodness um yeah so um so we did that um and also there's a there used to be this paintball thing it was a game where people would go out and they would shoot each other in the woods with paint I don't know why they would want to do that, but it was a big deal at the time, and so that's how we that's how we justified that we we're going up into the woods um, because these guys wanted to do the paint thing. So, so that was probably the most challenging movie. Um, my favorite movie, my personal favorite movie, just because uh, as an actor is um, Face Down because I got to play schizophrenic and I loved working with Joe Montaigne and Peter Riegert. Um, that was, I thought it was going to be so challenging, but actually if I took it one person at a time, one character at a time, and I know it's funny to hear, but playing a schizophrenic was not that hard. It was, 
it was, I, I mean, it was, you know, usually it, it's, it's, and people always say, well, I didn't want to say it, but it's probably not that hard for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, my it's, goodness. It's, I was waiting for you to, to get that. <laughs> I just, I, I said so. <laughs> anyway, um, but I think my favorite from a heart standpoint, just because people love it so much, is Night of the Comet. People, um, ha- for some reason, have a really strong connection to that, and it's very, very heartfelt. And um, it really makes it really makes me feel like I did something, I'm doing something good with my life that that it means that much to other people. And that's like to me the whole point of it. And of course, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I mean. It's in the Library of Congress. My cheerleading outfit is in the museum at Universal Studios. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, so, and I'm sure somebody wants to buy it, I'm sure. Next thing you know, it, I want you to put it on eBay so I can buy it. <laughs> so. Well, actually, I did. Set my, my other my one from the Night of the Comet got, um, became very quite iconic, too. We had two of them because I was running around basically in the same outfit for most of the movie. So we had two because I would run around and get dirt, you know, be attacked by things and get dirty. So um, Tom's daughter took one of them, and, but then I had one of them. And people were trying to buy it from me for, for a long time. So I finally did sell it to a private collector on the on the um, condition that if I ever wanted it back, he would sell it back to me. Uh huh. So and he's got it there. It's, it's on a mannequin, and he again he knew this outfit better than I did. He said, "Well, where's the little watch?" I went little. Oh my gosh, the little! I forgot I had it on. I had it on through the you know like a, she had a little plastic watch. He'd go, "Um, is this the same blouse? Um, are these the same socks?" <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, they listen. This stuff is really important, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, more so than it's really funny that it's more so because uh, well, you're an actor and you're in it. There's a million things going on. But I guess if you sit and watch it, then you have you, you have that eye for detail. When we watch ourselves, watch it back. We're watching to see if, if we did a good job or not. We're not necessarily picking up all those um, those details like collectors are, but they know all of them. And you know, sometimes with a blooper thing, you'll know on the set that you make that it's a blooper because, like, you'll think of something you've already shot the master shot, so it's not going to match. But you think we go, you know what? It's worth it. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> yes, everyone's going to catch that it's. Well, no, sometimes they don't catch that it's a mistake. But the people who sit there and watch things and look for mistakes will get a charge out of this one because it's a big mistake. But we don't care. It's a really good joke, so we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! I think you gave me some really memorable moments in this one, and if um and, and if you happen to have a memorable moment, it can be uh, whatever you like. You can just uh, tell us about that. A memorable moment. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, gosh, my, you know, my whole life is a memorable moment. My God, every time I turn around, my dreams come true in some way. You know, I, I, sometimes I pinch myself and I think nobody else gets to sit and watch television and personally know three or four people that they see in the course of a night. You know, nobody goes to the movies and sees, you know, their friends in the movies. Um, I live in Los Angeles, which is like walking around in Technicolor. Mm-hmm. I, you know, my, I, I, I just pinch myself. I'm so blessed and, and I'm so I feel I know that I'm fortunate to be doing what I love to do. And, you know, every time I walk in someplace, I meet somebody that I've always wanted to meet, you know, or, you know, um, you can be friends with somebody who wrote your favorite movie out here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to protect people's privacy, so I'm not really saying names. But, oh, I understand. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's just, um, I, you know, I couldn't, I don't want to sound obnoxious because nobody, you know, everybody's got their own own challenges in this life, and I certainly do, too, but. I think it's important to say that I know how lucky I am, mm-hmm. and I appreciate, I appreciate it every single day. That is amazing, too. And who do you consider your biggest influence in your career? Oh, gosh. Um, um, I The woman who played my mom on the soap taught me everything I knew because she could have squashed me like a bug. I didn't have the experience. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never been on TV before. And instead, she took me, you know, under her wing, like she taught me how to cry on cue or you know, she would walk me through these things. And, and other, you know, otherwise I, you know, I don't know if I could have kept that job because it moved so fast. And I mean, I'm sure I would have found a way because I was going to be damned if I didn't make it and had to go home with my tail between my legs. That was not going to happen. Uh-huh. So I would have learned it some way. 
but she was wonderful to me, and, and um, I, you know, I, I'm still friends with her to this day. And then I had another a coach named Roy London, who's not alive anymore. He's not with us, but 